Jedi, false Jedi, star maps, star whales, distant galaxies. We're not sure if we believe any of it, but welcome to Seismic Cinema, where we're going to review Ahsoka, I would say season one, but season two is not actually being confirmed yet, although hopefully there is one. Um, yeah, so we're going to review the season, and you can find us on social media, on Facebook, X, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok. You can listen or watch on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all the rest. So make sure you like and subscribe. And you can buy us a coffee on our Buy Me A Coffee page, which Paul will tell us what it's called. Buy Me A Coffee forward slash Seismic Cinema. There you go. Question mark, I think. <laughs> Question mark. I think that's what it is, I. Okay, so I'm joined by uh, James, who's going by the screen name of Anakin. And Paul, who's going by the screen name of Captain Enoch. So how are we today, guys? Good, good. Glad to be back after my wee bout of COVID. Um, but I must say the intro, I much prefer James doing it after the Total Recall episode last week. <laughs> That's rude. I'm yeah. just kidding. He's the be... cracking wee host. And that'll be remembered when you're doing it next week. <laughs> <laughs> so on that topic, um, recent podcast so last month we did sport in september because we love alliteration so we looked at space jam we did dodgeball we did the karate kid and paul's now an avid cobra kai fan yeah just finished season one yep and we did our first seismic cinema sorry seismic soccer episode um and this month we are doing out of this world october and we started off me and james last week looked at total recall and then next week, we're doing Starship Troopers, which Paul has been banging on about for ages. So I'm looking forward to finally watching it. And then on to our second Seismic Soccer episode. So are you looking forward to the, the month ahead? Yes, yeah. I'm uh, looking forward to it, aye. Yeah, me too. This is the first I've actually got a chance to speak, talk about Ahsoka since it all started. Because you did the solo episode and you and James did uh, episode two. So this is the first I've got to talk about it. Plus, I love Starship Troopers, so... It's going to be a good month. With that in mind, um, as Paul said, I reviewed Solo. The only Solo episode I've done was um, the review of 1 and 2. And then James joined me for a separate episode where we reviewed episode 3. So make sure you go back and check those out for some more in-depth analysis. Yep, because there are a couple of crackers. <laughs> right, before we get into the main review, we just wanted to just talk about our wee bit of background uh, in relation to Ahsoka the character so Paul you you'd watched bits of Clone Wars up till quite recently but then after a wee bit of hassling you went back and watched Clone Wars and Rebels so yeah, yeah. ironically it was, a, it, was a, ironically it was the first time I got COVID a couple of years ago and I had a couple of weeks off so hmm. end up binging all the Clone Wars and thank god I did because I feel like if I hadn't, this would have been a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a mission to understand, I think. But because I watched it with my girlfriend, and my girlfriend hadn't watched any of Clone Wars or Rebels or anything like that, she just watched the films, and that's that's it. So it was quite a lot of explaining um, throughout the different episodes and trying to explain what different things were and pointing out the Easter eggs and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm glad I watched Rebels and Clone Wars beforehand. I love when my hassling pays off. <laughs> of course, um, I'm the opposite of that because I didn't watch any Clone Wars, Clone Wars or um, Rebels, so I was getting the the background of it all during your episode three um, episode. So, yeah, it's the totally opposite. It's quite good. Then we'll get quite a lot of variety of experiences here. Yeah. Did you watch it by yourself, Colin, or did Alien watch it with you? Nah, Alien doesn't watch Star Wars related to content, unfortunately. Um, Jor- me and Jordan started, because he wanted to wait till it was all out, but we watched the first th- three episodes, I think, but then he was too hard to pin down to watch it, so I abandoned them and watched the rest myself. <laughs> Quite right. Because I had, I had deadlines to meet, actually. <laughs> Ironically, because we recorded this days later than we were originally going to. Um, I know. I, I could have taken my time, but yeah. I wasn't. Plus, it's horrendous so. when you're on Twitter and like Instagram and all that because there's spoilers everywhere. As soon as you uh, go on, it's just like something relating to it. 
I know I just don't really touch social media until I've had a chance to watch the new episode. All right, before we get into the review, uh, I've got a few seismic statements. Um, the first one I thought was quite interesting was, um, I always forget her name, then it comes back to me, Rosario Dawson, that plays Ahsoka. Um, she's previously been in a film with Hayden Christensen before. Did you know that? No. I've not seen it. I just saw it. Um, Shattered Glass. I've heard of it before in relation to Hayden. But so yeah, they've they've acted. So that's also kind of Anakin. They've acted in a movie together before, which I thought was quite cool. And related to that, they also went to acting school together. So Ahsoka and Anakin's paths have been entwined a lot longer than we originally thought. I was about to say that I'd heard the acting school one before. I heard Rosario Dawson yeah. talking about it. Like it's weird seeing them. Again, kind of thing after being yeah. away for years. It's pretty cool. Um, and the late great Ray Stevenson, who plays um, I forget his name, Balin, in this Balin's. show. Um, he actually voiced Paul. You might remember him, Gar Saxon, one of the Mandalorians from the Clone Wars. Yep, yep, one of the Mall Mall yep. or what they're called. And this number four, this was the first Star Wars TV series to have an opening crawl of any kind. Clone Wars had the kind of montage voiceover, but it wasn't like a crawl. So, yeah, yeah, no, it was good. It was a good. It was a good callback. I did enjoy it, and it was the red writing, wasn't it? So it was a bit yeah, different, which is a bit like the kind of latter Clone Wars episodes. And the last one, uh, I just really appreciated this. Um, the, the start of the first episode heavily mirrors the start of The Phantom Menace when Balin and uh, I keep forgetting her name Shin, Shin. Um, when they arrive at the ship with their hoods up and then they're talking about I can't remember specifically what they're talking about but it's quite a lot like when Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan arrive on the Trade Federation ship back in episode one so i thought that was quite a i think it was intentional as well i didn't realize that see when you said like the first scene i was like is that when ahsoka's playing with that puzzle in the desert no like, how's that part how's that like episode one no it's when um, they arrive on the ship do you see it now yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Aye, that's that's the first introduction to him isn't it? yeah and i thought it was, Which was really, badass by the way a badass a, a really strong start so yeah there's just some seismic statements so Really, we, we talked about maybe ranking the episodes, but we thought that may be a wee bit too rigid. So we've got all the time in the world now just to have a broad discussion about the season, what we liked, what we didn't like, thoughts for the future, Easter eggs, uh, themes, and, and different things we noticed. So who wants, who wants, who wants to, to start? Uh I'll go oh. first then. Why not? Oh, I've been away for I've been away for a while and no heard my own voice. Um, <laughs> yeah, overall, generally positive. I did. It wasn't really many points. No series. I was like, this doesn't make sense, or I'm not enjoying it for such and such a reason. Um, like when I was comparing it to things like Obi Wan, like I liked Obi Wan, but I had so many problems with it. There was just so many things that didn't make sense uh like just logical errors and i was like I, I can't i hate this i hate this for like having new mcgregor and stuff and i hate this yeah but i found this a lot a lot easier to handle and i like that they're trying to take the story off a bit kind of a different tangent because it could have been easy just to stay safe and probably end up in tatooine again like every other star wars series it ends up um, but I tried something different. I really like Filoni's vision of what's going on. I like it. A lot of the characters are like voiced by the same characters, and like visually, I thought the the whole series was appealing. It did start off slow, which I was kind of a bit apprehensive about because. I was expecting it to start off a bit a bit quicker, try and get the story up to speed. But it did kind of bring a lot of character development about. But 
I'm kind of getting used to the slow burn in Star Wars because I enjoyed the way Andor started off with a slow burn. So it's not actually that big a deal for me, really. I think it's just something to get used to. I think as Star Wars fans, yeah, wouldn't expect it to start off like a million miles an hour, lightsaber fights, starship fights, just like balls to the walls kind of thing. Uh, but uh, I did enjoy the pace after kind of getting over it, getting over myself with that. Um, but overall, generally positive. I enjoyed the characters as well. The characters are really good. Then you get really, really get behind them, and even like the the bad characters, shall we say. Uh, their introductions, just Erfin was just so kind of on point, grandiose, and I loved it. I loved it a lot. <laughs> right, James. I feel like from just speaking to you in the lobby, you might have an alternative view on the season potentially. Um, possibly. So essentially, you know, I've came into this with basically not watching any Clone Wars or Rebels. So I felt I was kind of lost, really, such, because I've read in some some ways in some articles that I've read, it's like Rebel Season 5 or something. Is it Season 5? There's four seasons of Rebels or something. Mm-hmm. It's a continuation from that. So maybe I'd, not a disadvantage for me, but can I go in what you were saying, Paul, at the start, that, you know, if you hadn't watched it, then you'd be kind of all over the place. And I felt that's where I was at the start. And maybe still am to a degree. So for me, the first two episodes were really, really slow. As it was a slog for me to get through them. It started off brilliantly. I loved it. Um, but then it just got slower. And I understand I had to go into the, the whole, you know, developing the characters and whatnot. But for me, it could have, it's easy. It could have went one, one, way, one way or the other. It could have went that stuck with it. Or I just turned it off. And basically, if it was there for Colin, I think, because he was pushing me, pushing me, pushing me to, <laughs> to watch the next episode, because we're doing the review of it, I thought, I'm going to give episode three a shout here. And I think episode three was the one that turned it for me. It was really good. From in my, in my view, anyway, I know Colin maybe had different views on the order of the which was best there, but since then, episode three, I thought it was really good. And then it started to get better. And it, you can start to see a wee bit more action, a lot more kind of what I was looking for in Star Wars. So I started off slow. It got better. We can talk about specific episodes as we go on. But I, I did watch it twice. I had to watch it twice because I think in the first instance when I watched it, I didn't give it a fair... I went to that whole first two episodes, I was like, mm, I need to go back and watch it again. And I watched every episode again. Um, and I did enjoy it more the second time round. I even enjoyed the first two episodes the, the second time round. Um, so you had a bit more background to the characters? Yeah, aye. So I think that's what I needed. And don't get me wrong, I was the same in Mandalorian as well. The first season of Mandalorian, I thought, hmm. It doesn't help me think to work at all when I'm tired. And I'm just going, mate, this is even more of a slog than it should be, do you know what I mean? So, I'm glad I watched the second time round. There's a few of the episodes a bit than others. There's certainly the, the, the you know, the graphics and, you know, the, it was so colourful. It was the dialogue as well, something really good. The characters, I thought, were, were decent. Um, but you guys can maybe compare the characters to the actual Rebels as we go on, because you may have different opinions than me. But I think overall, I did enjoy it the second time round. Does it mean, though, that I am fully converted a Soka fan? <laughs> okay. Um, if you may go into that more as we... As we nah, I, I, t- I totally get it. Because even the points, like, I'd watched Rebels once all the way through. And the first couple of seasons, I, I'd be watching it. I'd fall asleep in parts just because it wasn't interesting to me. It was just, like, kind of childish, in my opinion. And I was I was struggling with it, and then towards the end it gets really good, but some of the callbacks I think I've probably missed as well, um, and I felt like I was having to stop, like pause the actual thing to explain things a lot to my girlfriend because she was just like, "Who is this? Where did they come from? 
what does that mean? Because it was just kind of totally separate from the, the main franchise kind of thing, if you know what I mean, just from the movies. So you really had to know your stuff to know what was going on, I think. No, I, I understand that. Do you mean? Because I'm like that. Because the way you guys are with Star Wars, I reckon I'm the same with Doctor Who, where I would, you know, it would be spin offs and whatever, and I would know things. But I did say at the end of episode uh, three, where I did the review with Colin, that I would go back and watch Rebels. I didn't. I just didn't have the time to do it, to be honest with you. But I, still, I do want to go back and watch it all because I do want to get more of a in depth kind of background in Star Wars, you know, but for me, it's just the films. Um, yeah, yeah. That's not enough now, because they're branching out in different different areas, aspects of the whole of the universe, so I, I do need to get into it a bit more. Uh, I just hope it doesn't again get like Marvel, where you have to have watched every single episode of every single thing and movie to understand what's going on in a certain scene. I feel like, Star Wars, yeah. Can, yeah. I feel like Star Wars do it better than Marvel currently, I would say, with the shows. Yeah, because there isn't that much, there isn't as many, but yeah, I hope it doesn't go that way. Where mm. I probably would do it for Star Wars, but Marvel have just totally lost all motivation to watch all the different shows. I've not watched Loki, I've not watched Miss Marvel, I've not watched Secret Invasion. I just stopped after a while. I just I was like, I can't keep up with everything yeah. turning out and try to connect all the dots. Aye, but that's just me, my my mere. mere Simple brain cannot handle all that. Oh, well, saying that, I've, I've not watched any Loki, and I've not watched um, what's that one, The Secret Invasion, because it's, uh, there is hundreds of them. And then, by the time the day came out, there's a new film coming out, and you have to watch the program. So, so the play example with that one is One Division. You had to watch One Division to really get a, a background on um, what's that? Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Uh, Doctor Strange so. And there's aspects like, oh, of Loki and Ant Man and all that stuff, and it's like, oh, I can't be bothered. Right. On the whole, I enjoyed it. Like, really enjoyed it in some places, but there was also there was some bits I wasn't as keen on. But they were mostly in the first. They were mostly in the first couple of episodes where I had some of my issues. Um, might as well just discuss them now. So it was. Um, Sabine getting stabbed in the end of the first episode. I just had a few issues with that. What did you guys think of it? Well, you knew she wasn't going to die. Yeah. Uh, Qui Gon's turning in his grave. It was the uh, it was the lack of stakes because yeah, as you said, they weren't going to kill a major character off in episode one. Yeah, but I think was it just to bring Ahsoka and Sabine a bit closer together? Is that all it was really there for? Possibly, or just to add a bit of a drama, but I don't know. As you alluded to, like Qui-Gon got run through a lightsaber and died right away, and he's one of the most powerful force users of all time that discovered the path to immortality. But Sabine, who's not even a Jedi at that stage... Just gets away with a scratch, basically. He's a bit older, though, wasn't he? Maybe he caught his kidney or something. I don't know. I just I thought that was one or of my least favorite spine. parts. Through the spine, that's what it was. Through the spine, did. That was one of my least favorite parts of the show. That, but um, also I thought I'm just going to talk. I'll obviously talk about positive things later on. I just wanted to get a few of the things I didn't like out there at the moment. It um, was. The whole star map again, like they already did that in Force Awakens when they were trying to find Luke. I just thought it was a wee bit of a lazy. I know they had to work out a way to get to the other galaxy, but I just felt it was a bit lazy. Like repeating this kind of same idea. Yeah. And how did yeah. they know that they'd went there? Who? Oh, is it because of their visions, wasn't it? That's right. Aye, so the, the Night Sisters are sending divisions to Morgan, so she knew that's the galaxy to go to. I was kind of thinking in my head, I was like, how did Aye. they know what, what galaxy to go to? Because there's like loads of galaxies. Yeah, because I was thinking that, I, I had a thought, I wrote it down, I was like, what was, what? why Why did Thrawn wait till that exact point 
to like start making his move. But it was obviously he needed the he needed the hyperspace ring, didn't he, to get back to the galaxy? Because um, otherwise, like, what was he waiting for? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that was that was two criticisms. The other one, which I, I get in some regards, is you go to this whole new galaxy, but you just see one planet. It'd have been nice. Maybe that's something we'll see in the future. But I just thought it'd be nice to see more of this brand new galaxy, and it was just cons- consigned to one planet, albeit an interesting planet. Um, what did you guys make of that? Would you have liked to see more of the new galaxy, or do you think this worked for this part of the story? Mm, I don't know, because it might travel. I don't know if they get a ship fixed and they've got time before they get back to their own galaxy. Maybe they will travel about this this galaxy to try and find answers, but um yeah, I don't know. I think if they try to I think if they tried to go around this galaxy in this season, it'd probably been a bit too much yeah. for the time they had. I think yeah, they just but... they didn't have time to it need, need to be some stupid side quest that was kind of just rammed in for them to go somewhere else. I don't think it would have worked to be honest. Yeah. yeah I don't think the planet was a bit I did think the planet was a wee bit kinda nondescript right enough like i liked yeah. inhabitants but the actual kind of yeah uh, geography itself was a bit kind of gray and yeah i was exactly the same i thought the planets were a bit similar to the planets in obi-wan and that they were just like a forest or a deserted wasteland but as you said i like the i thought the the noughties were quite funny they're a bit just like gungans basically uh small gungans or shells and i like the the dog things the howlers, the howlers, yeah. I thought they were that scene particularly with the when he, the dog walks away and then it just kind of walks back into the shot. Like I thought that was quite funny. Um, I did like I the know. fact that they brought the kind of magic and stuff into it, and like the because obviously this links into the Fallen Order games as well a bit, doesn't it? With the, some of the symbols, it does. It does. And look, and I've, still, I've still not finished the first Fallen Order. Oh, did you get it? I got it. I got it for PS Five. Got a PS5 coming. So I got Jedi Survivor. I still need to finish. I might borrow that once I've finished the uh, or if I yeah. ever finish. I was one. so gutted when I finished Fallen Order and I didn't I realised that the the sequel wasn't on PS4. I was so sad. Uh, is that why you got a anyway, PS5? That's why I got PS5. Um, <laughs> I so that the only other thing, maybe we'll just get them out here now, is I really didn't like the whole Sabine becoming a Jedi angle. Or the was, way it ever, it, was it ever insinuated in the cartoons that she was going to be a Jedi? Well, she she obviously used to have the dark saber, and like Kanan trained her, but there was never any thoughts of like force power. I don't know if it was just the way it was done. Do you know what I mean? See how at the end she uses the force once to grab the lightsaber, but then in the next scene she's like pushing Ezra across like the big chasm. I felt like that was a wee bit kind of. OP for somebody's just learned yeah. how to do it. But I wouldn't if I was Ezra, I wouldn't have been trusting Sabine there. Yeah. Who knows? The force what, did you guys make of, ways. what did you guys make of Sabine's kind of journey and starting to use the force and stuff? I I mean obviously I wasn't sure aware of what happened to the cartoons, so I'm coming from a different angle, but um for me I kinda thought it was going to end up that way. Do you know what I mean? It was all kind of leading towards to be becoming, you know, using being a, being a Jedi and whatever. So I can expect it. Whereas I don't know, if obviously it's a, it's a down point for you, isn't it, Colin? That you, you weren't sure about the what direction they would take it in, or maybe. I just think it'd be more in interesting if she ultimately couldn't do it, but she became a Jedi that didn't use the Force, but just used her other abilities because she's obviously a good warrior. So I don't know. No, actually, I think um, I thought well, I quite liked it. To be honest with you, at the end as well, I, I mean, I don't have any problems with it. So, do you, do you know the one big thing I kept thinking, Paul, and you'll know what I'm talking about with this? Where's her jetpack? It'd have been so useful in such a. She, she always has a jetpack on in the in Rebels, and there were so many instances in this show that I was like, like that chasm. She could have flown across that easily with the jetpack. Like, where is it? Oh uh, yeah, but then she couldn't use the force to push them over, so that's why. <laughs> That's probably why she didn't have it, yeah. yeah. But it just they got, they got to the end of the series and thought, oh man, she can't use this jetpack now. We need to rewrite everything and take that jetpack out. 
<laughs> I think she was. I was her big. I was probably one of her most iconic character features. The jetpack because she was always in there. Yeah, I don't know. I thought I kind of missed a trick. A trick was she been this season? To be honest, I just. I don't know. What did you make of the? Bit. What did you make of the actress? I, I found her character a wee bit annoying at times. Maybe just a wee bit. I was going to say annoying, but it's just mainly because like. She kept making stupid decisions and like I feel like in the cartoon she's one of the smarter ones. And but she's quite sarky. But in this one she was just kinda like doing a lot of things that weren't beneficial to her. Or then like just taking the map and then it gets stolen off her. And then she hands over the map willingly. I don't know. I just found hard to be a wee bit. And then when she gets to the planet, like Ezra's like, "Oh, how did you get here?" And he's, she's like, "Ah, oh, it's a story for another time." It's like I didn't mind right. that, but in a sense, I, know, right now. I know. I, I know there was like a urgent situation, but I kind of, on a human level, got it that she just wanted to have a wee bit of normality with her pal for like a wee while. I I, I get it to an extent. Um, she hadn't seen him in so long. It'll be a bit different for you, James, in the sense of like, how did you find the Sabine character? Did, did you find her irritate? Is it maybe just because we know her from before, or we see, see it differently? Or no, I didn't particularly like her either. I don't know why though. I think it is. I just don't know if the acting was that good. Yeah. Um, so there was just elements. I, I thought the dialogue from her was maybe a wee bit, mm, you know, robotic, possibly. Um, but I don't have that comparison, so it's different, different for me. You're coming from a different angle. I didn't. I I, I wouldn't. Say, I didn't really like like the actress mm. um, or the character, but I obviously understand why there's a requirement there for her. Do you know what I mean? And what she's got today. I don't know, man. I'm hoping that there's another, another season of this because I. Or I go back and watch because I'd, I'd like to go back and watch it and just kind of get a, a proper idea of you know what the character can do and what her whole background is. Yeah, uh, she does have an interesting backstory. I think there definitely will be a season two. I think it's been very see. You can tell from social media that it's been well received yeah. generally. Yeah, talking about the casting, uh, what do you think they're going to do with the the Bale and Skull? Uh, Missing shape in the Star Wars universe. Check animation. I don't know. I don't Kills know. Kills of the Jedi. Do you mean the season I mean, two? Like, I mean, the Ahsoka series. I. I think they have to recast because he's he's obviously see at the end. This is another one. Um, Balin's end, James. You know when he's standing looking at the. He's at the kind of mountain, there's like statues. Yeah. So that's very significant to Paul. I'm assuming you've worked that bit out. But the Mortis Gods. Aye. So there's, there's an arc in Clone Wars where Anakin, Obi Wan, and Ahsoka go to this planet and they meet these. It's like the first ever Force users, isn't it? Something like I try to explain it to Scarlet. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of it's, it's so we, won't do, we won't do it justice. It's a free episode arc from Clone Wars. I would recommend checking it out because Clone Wars has weak episodes, filler episodes, but the arcs, I'm sure Paul will agree with me, the arcs themselves, most of them are really, really good, particularly that one. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorites. So basically, he's on the search for like the origins of the Force because he talked to the yeah. going back to, to the beginning. So I think his character's story is too important to just write off. Yeah, and he's looking they, at a beacon in the distance or something as well, isn't he? Yeah. I wonder uh, what that is. No, nah, I think they'll need to recast him. I think he was great. It's the first time I've ever seen him in anything, Ray Stevenson. Um, but I did think he was great. But I think they will need to recast him because I don't think it can work any other way. What do you guys think? Yeah, it has to be it has to be somebody very similar to him anyway, at least. But because they wouldn't be able to animate him like they did, kind of Tarkin and Rogue One, because it's probably too expensive. And he's just died, so it'd be a bit insensitive. Yeah, plus he's a hairy fella, and I'd imagine hair to get right on that kind of CGI would be terrible. 
it was because um, recasting can work. Like, although it's ultimately proven to be the last one, the Secrets of Dumbledore movie, they've had. I always mix up the names. Mads Mikkelsen mm-hmm. as a Grindelwald, and I thought he was Johnny Depp. Better than Johnny Depp by far, I would say. Yeah. Um, Plus, so you get it in TV series all the time, like Game of Thrones. There's one character, um, Dario Naharis or something. They just between seasons just changed, and it, it didn't look anything like the guy. Like the first guy had long hair and he looked like a big long face, and then the second guy had kind of shortish hair and just a mustache and a beard and all that, and it was just accepted. So I'm sure we do far. That's a wee bit jarring, but I think they do. They need to do it well, though. They would need to get somebody of a similar caliber. And yeah, yeah. Ah, who knows? We'll let let them do it. James, what did you make of Balin and Shin, the kind of dark side? They're not really dark side users, really. They're more like anti Jedi rather than pure Sith. I uh, no, I, I liked them both as um, characters actually. Um, Balin for, for me anyway was like proper badass I felt um, just I'm hoping they recast them um, and it's just they put them in the CGI that they've got to um, from what, what you've said there I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed his character in it I, I, at the same time though I didn't like you know, he was in there the first scene where he came out of the ship and I felt maybe he I don't know what you guys think. I'd like to have seen more of them mm. in the whole entire series. Um, but that's just me. I just felt like that he was <clears throat> more of a kind of a character that for the battle scenes and he would be able to kind of, I don't know, man, like just kick ass. Do you know what I mean? I just. For the start, I think I'm just kind of spoke about it as well. Like, you know, there's maybe just too much chatting going. I like the, the kind of action scenes more, and that's probably where we kind of differ in terms of fans. You kind of call me a, a, a kid, Star Wars fan, if you like. Do you know what I mean? I want the, the, the action where the kind of slow burn record is, is near for me. But I just want, I'd like to have seen Miriam and more in terms of just, you know, just. Be able to fight, and, yeah. you know what I mean. So, and I did, I did like Shin as well. Um, I thought she was quite a quiet character, and she did like, went about her business quite quietly. Like in terms of you know, she, but then there's that scene where I saw her, you know, basically come here, we'll take you in, drag your weapon, we'll take you in, and she just runs away. And um, so that was a kind of opportunity for her there. But I did like both of them, and I, I quite enjoyed them. His characters, and I'd like to see more, obviously more of them coming into season two, which I think there will be. I've did a lot of kind of reading on it all, and I think it's, it'd be foolish of Disney not to put another season out, given how much it's got in terms of plaudits and whatever. There is the whole less is more as well. Like, there's this amazing stat that Darth Vader's only in a new hope for like 10 minutes or something <laughs> crazy like that. Um, <laughs> I've, were you surprised, Paul, that you only very briefly saw them in the the finale? They were only in it for like a couple of minutes each. Were you? Did you think yeah. you see more of them at the end? I was actually about to say that because, like in my head, I was thinking like in the final battle, I was like, "Is Shin going to come save them or something?" Like because you hadn't seen her at all. Um, I knew Balin was off doing his own thing, so I didn't think he was going to come back. But I thought of Shin because she got that offer earlier on that she might turn up at some point to save the day. So I was quite surprised when they were just kind of just papped off to the end and she just, she's basically the leader of the indigenous people and uh, and Balin scores on the statue and that was it. I was kind of disappointed by that, but I think maybe they were gearing up for a lot more time in season two with their arcs. So maybe it's not a bad thing that they've only got a wee bit of time here, but I was quite surprised because I was expecting a wee bit more. Yeah, it's, you don't know, I suppose, until they release the show. How, like, they maybe didn't think the characters would end up being as popular as they were. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You, you seen the video of Shin? Uh, because she's always looking confused all the time when she asks like questions, and somebody gives her an answer, and she's like, <laughs> and it's just like a compilation of like every time she looks confused, and it goes on for a bit two minutes. A lot of people thought 
one or both of them were going to turn to like mm-hmm. the light side. James, is that something you thought might have happened with those two, or one of them? Uh, I thought one of them would have. Um, like you say that, I kind of, I, um, to be fair, I also thought it would be Shin that would have went to the the light side. Um, but I don't know. You may have the contrasting views here, but. I just think that she was maybe more easily led. I don't know if that's the, the right phrase, but certainly okay. I, I felt that she was always, for, for me, the one that would go, you know what, ah, yeah, this is the, the path I'm going to take. Um, but in a way, I'm quite glad, you you know what I mean, at the end, you, you don't really know. And they yeah. weren't in it, you know what I mean? And they weren't in the, the finale. And that's what I was kind of, kind of pointing towards. So I'd like to see them more in the finale. Um, they've got involved a lot more, but I, I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing them again, man. It was it was quite abrupt when Balin was basically like, "I'm leaving you. I'm going to do my own thing." But there was, there was like seeds of that throughout. Like he was quite, do you think he seemed quite reluctant to fight, and he, he doesn't really seem that committed. Like he kind of like. Still respects the Jedi, but he misses it. What was it he said? He missed the thought, the idea of it. Was it he said? Um, he missed the idea of it, but not the truth of it, or something. Yeah. So he's not he's not particularly a bad character as such. Like, no, he's not I think a bad guy is he? I think like I think in his earlier engagements, he's always trying to talk his way out of things rather than fight because I don't I think he'd just rather not fight and just go kind of the peaceful way mm. to the to get to the objective rather than having to whip out the moves. So I do think he's kind of got a, a respectfulness about him, but I don't even know if that's a, a right word for it. But he's, he's got like um, this kind of air of respect about him. And yeah, like see if you came out and said like he's the villain of this series, I'd probably say he's not really a villain, if you know yeah. what I mean. What was it he said when he was fighting Ahsoka the first time? It was like, how inevitable or something like that when he took his saber out. Mm. Oh, is that because it was because it was uh, Anakin's apprentice? I don't know. It was quite funny when uh, he was like, "Oh, I knew your master or something," and she's like, "Yeah, it's funny. He never mentioned you because <laughs> it didn't exist until <laughs> three weeks ago." Right. Let's let's cut to the chase. Am I right in saying that episode five is all of our favourites? Yes. Is that the Clone Wars flashback one? Yes. Then yes. Cool. So I thought it'd be good if we dedicated a segment of the review to that episode, and in particular, Hayden Christensen's performance and just what we made of it in general. So, James, obviously you've not... As we've discussed, seen Clone Wars Rebels, but you, you know that you know Hayden Christensen's Anakin from the prequels, and from the Obi One series. So, what did you make of his performance and the way they use his character? Um, I thought he was really good in it. To be fair, um, I didn't expect it at all. In in this, so when I seen him, I was like, "Whoa, this is um, pretty good, pretty decent." Wasn't as good as the moment you see Luke Skywalker though in, in Mandalorian, do you know what I mean? But it was still um like the whole fight scene with him and Ahsoka. Um and just the whole he's acting in that as well. I love the way that when they did the fight scene and get through all the kind of the Clone Wars and stuff, you could see that he was changing. So like the lightsaber changed colours and stuff like that. That yeah. was the effects there were, were amazing. And also when he's fighting Ahsoka as well, you can see when he's walking towards Ahsoka, you've seen Anakin, you've seen Vader, you've seen Anakin, you've seen Vader. That was the whole transition was 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 phenomenal. That whole, that whole scene, the whole episode, in actual fact, from Anakin, Hayden Christensen to the to the Star Wars, you know what I mean? They were, yeah. they were fantastic. Um, that was the standout episode. Um yeah, and even I don't know, man, I don't know what you thought we thought of his performance, but I was totally surprised by it. Like, like I, when I watched it again, I rewatched that episode. I've 
rewound it back and played it again because I was like, this is pretty decent. Um, and obviously, when he went through, through the Clone Wars, he was like, I don't recognise this battle and things. Mm-hmm. And there's, a, there's a few uh, things there. You know what I mean? It was, uh, it was cool seeing all the his outfits from the Clone Wars series in live action as well, Paul. Oh, 100%. That was such a good episode. Such a good episode. And seeing the clones. Um, which is quite well. funny. I seen something. I seen something the other day that people were saying the clones in this series didn't look as good as the ones in the movies. They didn't, they didn't look as real, but the ones in the movies are all CGI. Aye, these ones were real, seen, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, what? Nah, I thought it was great. But seeing us first seen that, like when she dropped in at the sand, I was like, what is going on here? And then I seen the troopers, and I was like, yes, here we go. Just like Battlefront, what Battlefront two, Battlefront one and two, back in the day. <laughs> James, see the one you were talking about the when it's like he's switching between Anakin and Vader. Mm-hmm. I, I generally think the one where he's walking away from Ahsoka. I've I've used the GIF on uh, Twitter a few times. Uh, I generally think that's maybe my favorite visual of all time in Star Wars, like as like an individual visual. Ah, he's is... walking away. Yeah, that was beautiful, wasn't it, man? It's just the way that it happened and it was presented to the to us on screen. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. What do you think? Like the backdrops of the blasters, wasn't it? Every time the blaster went off an explosion, you just see the, the outline change. It was so good. I saw some people criticise it because it was dead dusty, but I think it actually made you feel like you were in the battle yourself. Like, I didn't think that was a bad thing. Uh, I think it was just... There. I think obviously there's limitations, but like, I think it was just to make it more of a kind of dream sequence uh-huh. rather than make it sound like a seem a realistic as if she she'd gone back in time kind of thing. Yeah. I think this has made it feel more of a kind of dream a dream within a dream kind of thing. So I didn't mind it that it was all dusty and obscured and the, you didn't actually see the enemies and they were shooting that. So I with, I didn't mind. With recent talk of like total recall James and we're talking about inception you probably quite like the the lack of clarity with what was happening to Ahsoka, like the the fact it wasn't really properly revealed. No, that's right. Um you don't. I like that. I like it whole if I say I'll say this in the, every episode. I like am- ambiguity, you know what I mean? I like ambiguous stuff. Um and I don't I don't know. Like I don't really know Ahsoka from past because I don't have any rebels experience here. I can see it ah- Ahsoka favourite which factual in front of me. But I don't know what's going to happen later on because at the end, it's like, oh, I know you're a master. How did he turn out to be? How are you going to turn out to be? There's a, there's a whole, whole road they could, they could go down, do you know what I mean? So, aye, I do like it. Without going into spoilers, so where she was, you know, like the the path she was kind of walking on when she first saw Anakin? Uh-huh. It's called The World Between Worlds and it came up in Rebels before. But, Paul, I'm... You're probably the same as me. They, they didn't really explain it that well in Rebels in terms of it's been left quite open ended. What is that actually all about? I I have no clue. Like I watched the Rebels episode and I was like, this is really weird. I don't understand it, but I'll roll with it. And then I seen it in this and I was like, great. <laughs> and I was like, but I wonder what they're going to do here. Do you think it's anything to do with see that uh, Mortis or we're talking about? Yes. Do you know how she something happened to her in that episode? Mm-hmm. Do you think the fact she can go between like the living and the dead is maybe connected to that? I'm trying not to give spoilers for James without we're still getting the discussion point in. Spoiler me, honestly. Spoiler me. I don't know. So I basically, she, well. she she gets killed by one of the first ever four shoes, but then they bring her back to life. It makes me wonder because oh. Anakin was there too. Where you see that for, man? <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is the reason they can be there because of that, maybe? Because they're obviously tying Mortis in with the Balin arc as well. So I'm wondering if the Mortis arc, which, James, is free episodes. You can watch it in an hour and it's really good. Um, that's maybe a better way to watch Clone Wars. Paul, would you say just maybe watch arcs instead of the whole thing and make it a bit more digestible? Well, maybe. Because, like, see Clone Wars as well. Like, it's not in chronological order either, which kind of confused me after you, but... Like some arcs take place after some other arcs and it kind of switches back and forth. Um, so, but 
there's probably I think there's a list on Disney Plus. It's just like essential uh, episodes, so it's probably yeah. just better watching that. Yeah. But what do you think? Do you think there could be something in that? Because obviously, this this is the second time this has happened to Ahsoka, and she was like, the way they did it in the show was a bit weird because she fell in the water. They find her in the water. So is she just lying in the water the whole time while having this kind of dream sequence? Like, or does she physically go somewhere? I don't know. It's a bit ambiguous. I can say oh, more. Like, I always thought it was just her consciousness that went. I didn't think it was her actual body. Yeah, maybe it was. But I suppose we don't need to know all the ins, ins and outs. Um, what did you make of a uh, young Ahsoka performance? I thought she did a Great job. That's to be last at the Guardians of the Galaxy, wasn't it? In the Barbie movie. Aye. Uh, she was um, young, Gamora, young Gamora. I know. I thought she was really good. Yeah. And it's quite yeah. funny because you don't ever think of Ahsoka being that young in the cartoon series. Aye. And then when you see it in real life, it's kind of like, oh, shit. Like, she was in, like, war scenarios and she was like a wee lassie and she was taking on, like, Darth Maul and stuff like that. And, yeah. aye, craziness. Definitely. Um, that sequence we're talking about in terms of the Anakin episode, it obviously brings in, well, we've not talked about her yet, but we can get to her in the future, but more uh, Jason Sindula. So Hera's son with uh, Kanan, who gets name dropped quite a few times. Actually, he's just going through this review. It's actually reminded me how many different characters, because we still haven't touched on Thrawn or um, Ezra as well. So and a few others so it was quite nice seeing young jason then although there was a what did you make of so basically he's the he's the child of a human jedi and then a a twi'lek so what did you make of the hair choice i thought it was just enough to let it slide So the, the the result of a male a, a human Jedi and a Twi'let is just a, a male with green hair. The makeup department ran out of budget. <laughs> I, I thought it was good. Paul, no worries. I thought it was good, Paul, that he had an actual purpose. Like aye, he so had a just role. Be aye, I thought that was good. Um, that he played a big part in that episode and them finding Ahsoka. Yeah, I thought Carson Teva has been a bit annoying in that episode, though. I, I find him good, funny, I must admit. I, I do like him, but I just find him just like, he's just, just general, we need the general, general. He's just the everyday guy, though, isn't he? He's just like, um, I don't care. <laughs> like that kind of yeah. thing. Have you ever watched Kim's Convenience? Mm, I've heard of it, but I haven't watched it, no. It's on Netflix, he's so funny, isn't it? I think, I like his continuity, because he, he obviously brings up the whole the Mandalore plotline, one of the yeah. hearing it that's as well. Um, but I liked um, seeing. I saw one of the YouTubers I listened to mentioned they think Ezra might go on to train Jason in the future. That'd be quite a cool development, obviously, because mm-hmm. he was taught by Kaden himself. Yeah, I wonder how they're going to try and think they're trying. Sneak them into some sort of some of the movie lore kind of thing at some points. Mm. Is that like some background, some background scene that they were there at some point at the same time the movies uh, were happening? Uh, what, they, what were they doing? That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, well, there's just there's so many characters. Um, this is actually, I've got my three questions I like to ask, and there's a good chance to bring in a couple of them. So, we all agreed episode five was our favorite. Yep. What was yep. your next favorite? Like, what was your set? What, what after that one? What would you say you felt was the one you enjoyed the most? Was it a, a second, a second standout? Um, I don't remember the name of the episode, Colin, but I think it was the one we were into just the throne. Um, I think that's six, maybe. I think it was six. Um, I, I don't know. I like that episode just because I like the introduction to him like it was the music you know it was i didn't know what to expect do you know what i mean i was yeah. like who is, this, who is this this person um and they just seemed so 
cool, but not cool in the he's just a cool, cool guy. I'm just like he, he was his mannerisms. It was like pure relaxed about you know it doesn't really matter if they've done this or that. We'll, we'll find a way to beat them. He's, he's never yeah. ever he's never ever um, panicked about anything. If that makes sense. Yeah. It's like he's always got a a plan up his sleeve. You no. Know, Plan A, Plan B, Plan C, and I just like that whole music towards that as well. When you when you you first see them, that was decent. Yeah. It's like a pro of the kind of crescendo. Uh, he was played by Lars Mikkelsen, who voiced him in Rebels as well. So that was like a one of the few ones that kind of did it in live action as well. Yeah. Is that not Grindelwald's like older brother or something? Ah, uh, that's Mads Mikkelsen's brother. Because um, Benedict Cumberbatch was heavily linked with playing through us because he's got the look. He looks a lot like the kind of book version. Yeah, no, I think I'd rather the voice, to be honest. I think it sounds better. Yeah. He's got a very unique voice, so I'm glad they stuck with it. What about you, Paul? Was there an episode other than Five that stood out yeah, to you? Because I, I, I actually wrote that as a question, like favourite episode other than Five, because I thought we would all like Five. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd go the same with James. Actually, like seeing a scene thrown, and I seen like the like the garrison of night troopers. I was like, yeah, we're back, baby. And uh, oh, don't know. James doesn't know us, but Colin, when we were all kids, like Colin was always like the good, the the light side force users. When we had the, like, the toys and stuff like that, and I was always the empire. So I've got a soft spot for the empire. Yeah, <laughs> nah, seen, I seen a, is that? I said, being horror fans, I'm assuming, and with the profile pic you created, I'm assuming you liked the concept of the, the zombie zombie stormtroopers. I did, I did. It's quite funny as well because he once all this that episode came up, everybody was like, "Oh, um, all these troopers are dead already. Like they're night troopers, and it's a zombie army." So it's quite interesting that they weren't. So they've just been through a lot of a lot of hell, and their yeah. unit, their armor is just all patched up to hell. So it was cool seeing them that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go against the grain. I'll talk to James while Paul's away. Um, James, my favourite episode was actually, other than five, was four. It was the one where they, there was like loads of duels going on. Like um, Shin was fighting Sabine and Ahsoka was fighting Balin. And then... Ahsoka was was it Ahsoka was also fighting the Inquisitor in the forest. No, oh, yeah. They, they had the bit at the end where Sabine shows up and sees Ahsoka getting knocked off the cliff. I thought that episode was just really action packed and just like a real kind of thrill ride. No, I, I agree with you. It was. It was kind of and I love the battles. I love the action. So I know I did enjoy that one as well. For me, it was just purely because I wanted to know what all the kind of hype was about, Tron, mm-hmm. you know, and I wanted to finally meet this guy. And I, so I yeah. totally, totally, um, I say I agree with you, certainly, but I know where you're coming from in terms of yeah. why that would be your, your, um, your favourite. Yeah, I feel like... I did. No, I was just saying, I did like the, the last episode as well. Um, I thought that was decent. Because it started to bring into the, you know, something again. The, the great mothers were there, and then they they brought the Morgan kind of yeah Morgan into it. And that whole episode seemed to go down quickly. I felt the, the 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 actual pace of that episode was decent, even though it was the finale. Um, and I, I think it's because it was like that action packed, and there was a lot going on with the characters in that as well. Um, so that was a close second for me, the finale. What was quite interesting, and I regretted listening to a non-spoiler review before I watched it, but there was quite a few people that didn't enjoy the finale and thought it was a bit disappointing. I, I quite enjoyed it, I would say, but there was there was a, a bit of disappointment out there about it. Well, not for me. I don't know what Paul thought about, about it. Well, did you enjoy the finale, Paul? I enjoyed it. I thought the kind of Ahsoka and Sabine getting left behind is a kind of wee bit, I don't know, like underwhelming. Like I know their story needs to, or well, must need to go there for some reason, but I just found that I kind of like, oh, so they're just stuck there then. Okay. 
It's a bit of an Empire Strikes Back cliffhanger ending, isn't it? Aye, because like basically the bad guys win. Uh-huh. Um, I thought the Night Troopers were a wee bit kind of, I don't know, like disappointing as well. Um, because the Night Troopers, like, they got, they got resurrected. Was that? Do you think they should have been a, a bigger prey or maybe been around a bit longer? Aye, I think instead of just getting like thrown in there and then it didn't really do much. Um, but I think maybe Ahsoka, Ezra and Sabine needed some sort of, I don't know, like backup or like maybe if they had some sort of indigenous people helping them in some way and then the Night Troopers could attack them. Would they made it for a better yeah. spectacle rather than you know the Not three names? Hi, I'm sure they would have made the good good snack. Um, but you know, I mean, it's just something to show that the Night Troopers could do something rather than having the three main characters just kill them again. Mm. I just felt kind of a bit underwhelming for everybody yeah. was expecting them to come. There's also a decent scene in the last episode as well, man, where Thrawn was just kind of like looking through the camera. The two tie fighters came either side of them to go to um, to find um, Ahsoka. That mm-hmm. was decent. I like that scene. It was just a noisy tie fighters. It was like, oh, that's that's pretty good. I don't know if you clock, clocked that or not, but it was, oh, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, Aye, just drop it, just drop it the hanger. Aye. Acceptable well, losses. Paul, you were away. I, I would <laughs> say my second favorite episode was uh, four. You know, when there's the the fights in the forest and then Ahsoka's fighting Balin and then Ahsoka gets knocked off the cliff. I thought that episode was really strong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye, that was a good one as well because that's when you first kind of see the Night Sister magic, isn't it, with Maroc? Maroc? That's the name of Aye. it? Yeah, yeah, it was kind of an odd character as well. That was kind of a red hair and everybody thought that was going to be like an evil Ezra or something like that. And it just, it just uh, wasn't. People thought it was Starkiller as well, like brought to canon. I've the, seen that as well. Or in... No, it was so, pretty cool. It was, that was a good episode too. Like that's when the, the series kind of started ramping up. Yeah. I think. I would definitely say four is when it, it hits its stride. Um, my second question for this review was um, favorite character. Um, James, do you want to start? Have you got a particular favorite character from the season? Ooh, favorite character. Um, hmm. Not particularly. Um, Hu Yang, maybe. <laughs> That's you, she, you stole. You stole that one. And I, I'm surprised we hadn't mentioned him yet. I thought he was hilarious. Uh, Hu Yang probably he's, he's just funny. Um, he's just you know, and plus even better that I found out that he's voiced with David Tennant. So uh, I'm going to go with Hu Yang. I was going to say that like Doctor also, Who fan coming in, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I also found he had a lot of quite kind of sweet moments. Like, see when he was like holding Sabine's helmet and he was like, I told them to stay together. And then he's like, I hope I see you again. Like, he had quite a lot of uh, emotion for a droid who at other times was very mm-hmm. like, sarcastic and blunt. Yeah, uh, even when he was speaking to Ezra as well, and he was like talking about his master and fixing the lightsaber for him and things, uh, that was nice. It's just that whole scene was nice. Because, uh, yeah. They, they, they said like Hu Yang would, uh, what was it? It was like about Jason. He was like, Oh, will you train me? He's like, No. And, it's, and then he asked something else and he's just like, No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. No, well, he's good. Oh, have you got a favorite? So uh, Hu Yang was who I was going to go for as well. I just thought he was really endearing throughout. Yep. Uh, I'm going to go for Bale and Skull. Okay. I was kind of toss up between him and Thrawn, but like Bale and Skull, even though he wasn't in it as much, like every line I thought was insightful um, and held weight and just his action scenes were really good. And I just liked the kind of way he carried himself. It wasn't, uh, you could just tell that he's a good actor. Um, sorry he's not going to be in it again, but no, nah, he, was, he was my favourite character. Coming through, I think. Like I said, it's toss up to him and Thrawn. Thrawn, just because the cartoons now he was uh, a bit of a badass, and this one he was quite calm, cool, collected. Um, I seen I seen a meme the other day. It was like me after three three drinks in, 
on a night out, and it's just a picture of Thrawn saying, long live the Empire. And I was like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're going for Balin. Um, Balin's go. I like to give a wee shout out to Chopper. I think he had some quite funny moments, like when he put the tracking be- beacon on the ship. He was doing like the kind of thumbs up, and then his we had the great uh, C3PO cameo, which I thought was really good as well. And then they said merely a droid, and then he's like having a pure strop about it. <laughs> uh, I really like the got a wee bit teary with this bit. See when it's like a dog going up to its owner when Chopper went up to Ezra in the Stormtrooper outfit, uh, and they had their big reunion, uh, which and then he, he saw Hera as well. So I thought that those were nice moments. I know I th- I thought the thing with Chopper, I thought he'd, like he'd go up to him and be like, "Where the fuck you been?" <laughs> I thought it'd be like something he would say rather than just kind of go quietly. Chopper's got a pot. Chopper's always had a bit of a potty mouth. <laughs> Pot, potty mouth war criminal. <laughs> yeah, but I thought he looked great in live action as well. Live action as well. Um, yeah. If, if you ever go back and watch Rebels, James, uh, every time Chopper does something, just think of his kill count. Okay. It, it goes up dramatically. Did Moisture <laughs> Farmer not have an episode on that, Paul? Oh, I do, especially for it. That's right. <laughs> um, what did you make of Hera as a character then? Hmm. I thought she was kind of sidelined a wee bit just because she wasn't part of the main story rather than just to yeah. warn the Senate and rescue Ahsoka but then that she didn't really have much to do I don't think but she was a good link in I really liked the kind of political scenes with the, the kind of rebellion side of things did you guys enjoy them? yeah I hate that senator yeah. though. Can't remember what his name is. Ziono. Ah, so I hate him. So there's a fun fact for him. He's actually in. I only watched a bit of it because it was more aimed at children. Um, the Resistance show. His son's the lead character in the Star Wars Resistance animated series, and Ziono is actually in that as well. Never watched Resistance. I've never actually watched it the full way through. But it was just a. A side note. Um, is that good. not a proper kid one, isn't it? That's a proper kid show. Uh, yeah, it was harder to get into, I found, but I quite like CTPO's cameo because it's a good way to bring Leia into it without digitally recreating Carrie Fisher. Yeah, she's she's had enough. Um, just pretty... Aye, so what was quite interesting is it's maybe a reflection on whether this show should have been called Ahsoka or just Rebels season four live action is we've talked for over an hour but we've not really mentioned Ahsoka. I don't know what that says. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard it's hard to say because like a few episodes she was quite she was kinda in the background as well. She'd only kinda come in for the main bit. Like really I think you're saying I think what we all think is this should be Called Rebel Season Five live action. It's not really an Ahsoka series. Yeah. So like, because a lot, of, a lot of characters got a share of the limelight rather than just her. There was very fleeting moments where she was just herself, kind of. We're getting to know her. I don't know. Just gonna say, why do you think it was called Ahsoka then? It's just because you're before in Mandalorian, is that what's happened there, or? I, mean, I think probably, she's a very, she's very well loved character. In the, in the fandom so I think it was maybe just to draw people in yeah because I think if you called it Rebel Season 5 people were like well I never watched the cartoon so I'm not going to watch that yeah that's, that's possible because I, I mentioned in our earlier reviews that she lacks a bit of, a, a bit of sparkle and a bit of personality particularly in the first three or four episodes but once she has our kind of epiphany with Anakin do you not think she's a lot more cheery and willing to take risks and just a bit more like her well, older self and the animated series? Aye, it's kind of like a rebirth, isn't it? Like, it's kind of like Lord of the Rings. Like Aye. Gandalf, Gandalf, Gandalf the Grey into Gandalf the White. Do you not think, like, do you know when she goes off on this, I mean, we talked about the Anakin episode, but that only is about half the runtime, the Anakin stuff. The other half with the space whales, because I thought they were really well done. I thought that whole bit was awesome as well. Um, 
and she seems to be just totally different and so much more laid back because Hu Yang's like, what are the the odds are astronomical that Joy's always say, but she's like, oh, just being cheeky, kind of thing. Going somewhere is better than staying still or something. Aye. So yeah, I think that was a big turning point in the se- in the season. Yeah. Oh, I, I meant to ask a question as well. Um, because I've not really seen anyone talk about it. Like, see all the cargo that they're taking from the Night Sister planet. What is it? What is the cargo? I reckon it was weapons for the art, like military. Hmm. But it could, it could be some Kyber. I don't know. I don't know. I was thinking it was maybe corpses or something for like. It kind of looked like coffin shaped. Yeah. Coffin sizes. There was quite a big focus on like packing up their stuff because they were taking their sweet time with it. Yeah. So I was maybe thinking it's maybe an undead army or like an army to resurrect or something, possibly. But I don't know. That just could totally be nonsense. Yeah. It's probably something we'll see more of in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be pretty cool, but... The, the only other character we haven't touched on was Ezra. So James, he was obviously a brand new one to you in this series. Uh, what did you make of his kind of actor and portrayal and stuff? Um, well, that, at the start of the season, this was we kind of we were saying his name quite a lot, um, trying to find him. We didn't know if he was dead, along with Rowan, and he was he was on this planet, wasn't he? With, 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 the, with the naughty. <laughs> um, no, no, I think I, I don't know. It's hard for me because I don't have a comparison, and that if it's easier for you guys, I think I just I felt he came into it. Well, I can't remember what episode he came into it. Now. Was it six? I think was it, it was the that? same. Was it not the same episode we meet from? Aye, right, so six then. Or maybe seven. Tail end. Aye, because Sabine finds him, doesn't she? Um, I, 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 I don't know, man. I don't, I don't really know about his performance. He had a lot of nice moments, certainly. Um, we kind of bringing back the characters. He was trying to find out what happened between Sabine and Ahsoka. There's, there's a lot of kind of uns- things that were unsure in terms of like what was happened since he's been away. I could have done it a bit better. I don't know. It's, it's that whole mysteriousness and we are kind of looking through the same lens as him, aren't we? Um, well, I was anyway, do you know what I mean? So I'm like, well, I don't know what's going on here. What happened between the two of them before? And I don't know, man. I think uh, it was quite a a short performance. He was in it quite a lot. He was only in yeah. it for, I, don't, I would like to find out how many minutes he was actually in it for. I did like it bit at the end where he was, you know, he, the, the chasm, he was, he was on, on the ship, he took out the, the trooper. Uh, he came back. He came back to to see Chopper and Hera and things. But I just like for, for for his character and for what they built up to be. I don't know if there should have been more of him in there. But at the same time, there's only so much things you can do without completely going off in like tangents. Similar to you're talking about the planet. It's only like having one planet there is probably better than just maybe having different ones and trying to do too much at the one time. And that you could lose people. Doing that, do you know what I mean? So, I I would like to see more of them, but I don't know how they could have done it. Is what I'm trying to say. He's a bit of a McGuffin, though, isn't he? He's like who they were trying to find. So it's a bit like Luke and uh, Force Awakens. Like he's only uh, the um, Paul, what did you make of the live action adaptation of Ezra? Uh, Alex, Ezra. I wasn't sure how they were going to play it right enough because. I thought maybe we were going to play it from the angle that he'd been on the planet like alone for 10 years and maybe it was turned into a kind of Rambo kind of character, like a kind of guerrilla warrior, right. like uh, just fighting from the fighting from the shadows kind of thing. And maybe it was a bit kind of darker, like disillusioned maybe. But he just seemed like it was kind of happy, cheery self from the get-go. So I was kind of happy about that, but I thought they might have played it a bit bit riskier and change his character a wee bit but it kind of just seems like the same Ezra from the cartoons like uh, yeah, when he's like oh no I don't need the lightsaber like I, I trust in the force and then like two minutes later he's like grabbing a blaster because he's getting overrun uh, and then 
when he's impersonating the Stormtroopers on the radio because he does that in the cartoon as well. So it's just like the Ezra from the cartoon. So I quite enjoyed it and I thought he played it well. Like, I didn't think he wasn't Ezra. Do you think they'll ever go back and fill in the gap of what he's been doing for 10 years? Tales of the Jedi, maybe? Maybe, possibly. That'd be good. There's a lot of stories to tell in that Tales of the Jedi. So I, I think that's a great them. show about filling gaps. Like, it's not a show that the masses will watch, but it's one that like we would definitely um, digest. Aye, 100%, 100%. I wasn't sure about him at first because... Obviously, he's 10 years older, and I didn't really know what I expected a live-action Ezra to look like because he's got blue hair in the <laughs> Rebels at the start. Um, but I think his eyes, like in his eyes, you could really see that there was the resemblance there. And I think yeah. he's, his, his mannerisms and his kind of manner uh, came across well as well. His mannerisms and his manner. His mannerisms and his manner, yeah. Well, that's true. Um so yeah, I think we've covered all of them. Is there any characters we've forgotten? I would say we've covered the Captain Enoch. How good he look? <laughs> it reminded me of something that, like you know the Sons of the Harpy in Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, the face, I yeah, the mask guy. Yeah. I thought it was kind of gladiator, like the one of the final battles, the tiger guy. But anyway, that's just me. Do you guys have any? Additional thoughts or anything you spotted? No. No? No, I think that's all, man. I've just got a, a few bits and bobs just while I took the note of it. Um, I wrote good mix of action and talking. I thought it was quite well mixed in that sense. I can't read my writing half the time. Um, nah, it's going to be a bit of a struggle for me to read all that. I reckon we'll cover most of it anyway. Oh, um, wait. I don't know. I don't know about how much James has watched, like Star Wars wise. But where would you put this in terms of shows that you've watched, Colin? Well, I was watching a video the other day where they ranked the seasons of the shows. So how I had it was, I think I had, I think I maybe had Mando season three bottom, just because I thought it was very disjointed. Yeah. And then I had Book of Boba Fett. And then I think I had Obi Wan, and then Mando season two because I felt it was maybe a wee bit too cameo reliant. Mm -hmm. And then it was more enjoyment. I put Andor third because I enjoyed Ahsoka more because I think Ahsoka was more my vibe, whereas I know maybe yeah. more your vibe. Uh, I've still got Mando season one top though. No, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Well, Mando season oh. one. Ahsoka, Andor, that way, yeah. What about you, James, out of all the Star Wars properties, you've, or TV shows, what do you think, compared? I, I need to go through them, man, I am properly, properly, but um, Mandalorian season one's probably up there, top. Um, Ahsoka, I don't know, maybe mid-table for me, just mm -hmm. purely because of my background on it, you know, so yeah. that would be the only thing I'd say. No, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. I'd probably put it like I've got Andor top just because I really enjoy the dialogue and then the set pieces of the whole thing. Um, then Did you watch Andor on the edge, James? No, didn't no, I? Andor. Andor. I watched it. It's very slow. That's why I'm only on like episode three or four, I think, maybe. Um, Once it gets it's, going, it gets going. It's, so, it's kind of like. One you would watch in the arcs again, I would say, because it's got like four kind of arcs throughout it. I would say, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. four, four storylines. That, um, so I've got my assignments, guys. I've got Rebels to watch, Clone Wars, and or right, I'm, I'll go on, I'll go on it. <laughs> just get just get a wee bit of COVID, you'll be fine. No pressure, <laughs> no, it's starting to wait up the COVID, man. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Paul? Where would you have it? I'd have it below Mandal Mandalorian and Andor, but above Obi Wan and Book of Boba Fett. And would you have a Soka? Would you have any? Would you have it above any of the Mando seasons? Uh, I don't know. I always think of the show as a whole. Um, like season one is the best, obviously. 
season two. Season, season two three was bit. very was very meh, but I had some good moments in it. Just not as many moments as season one and season two. But yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd put it below Mandalorian as a whole. Yeah, cool. Um, I did enjoy it. Like I did enjoy Ahsoka. I did, it wasn't like a bad series or anything. I just uh, didn't have as many good moments as other things. Okay, um, so seismic stars or ratings. I've got a rating down here. Paul, do you want to go first? What would you give this season out of ten? Uh, I'd give it six point five. Like it was, it was good. It's just a quarter of it at the start was just very, very slow, um, and it felt like it was. It took a long time to gear up to get to our galaxy, and then the galaxy wasn't exactly mind blown. So, I would disagree that it took them a long time. I think it was. I personally think it was quite well paced in terms of how they got there because it, it was clear objectives. It's not, it's not five, five episodes to get to the new galaxy. Hey, but you're going to a new galaxy. It's hardly just gonna. I know, I know, I know. But it just feels like they set the objective early on, and then it was just like small baby steps to get there. Um, I personally think but, you're being a bit harsh for that rating, but I respect your I respect your rating. Respect my authority. I respect <laughs> it. I don't, I don't agree with it, but I respect <laughs> it. Um, James, what would you give it out of 10? So Paul, 6.5 is lower than I thought you'd give it. I thought you'd give it a lot higher on that, to be fair. Um, now, uh, Colin, so we've got a you know how you said you were pressured about giving the thing 10 out of 10 and all that sort of stuff because Paul and I liked that? Uh-huh. Well, I, I will not be pressured into giving <laughs> So I'm going to give um, this 5 out of 10. I'm going to give it 5 out of 10. Simply because my experience is on the same as yours. Mm-hmm. And I found myself lost in a lot of it. After the second rewatch, or after the rewatch rather, not the second rewatch, the rewatch, I got a wee bit better for me, but it doesn't take away the fact that I still don't have the experiences. And like Paul said, I think that's quite slow to start. It's, uh, it was really borderline for me to stick with it. And I'm glad that I did, don't get me wrong, but that's a big thing for me. I had to be engaged pretty much for the start. And even though the good scene, it's the, the, the scene when they come on the ship at the start and they, they take out the ship or the personnel on the ship, it's still thereafter was the enough for me and then it got better and better but I think 5 out of 10 is fair for me at the minute if I was to go back and watch Re- go back and watch Rebels Clone Wars etc I'll have a different viewpoint and I might come back and give it another rewatch and then I will maybe give it maybe a wee bit higher but that's just where I am at this moment in time a lot, a lot of maybes there <laughs> sorry no, I said there's a lot of maybes there <laughs> yeah. um, no, no, no. Again, in your context it makes sense like I don't think you would feel that way if you had the experience that we have um, I gave it a I gave it an 8 because I thought like you might say the first few are slow but I still enjoyed them but I think I enjoyed the character building and filling in the gaps from uh, the, the different parts. My main issues are the ones I discussed at the start. Sabine's force usage, her getting stabbed, and whatever my other thing was. But um, it's all Sabine's fault then. Yeah, um, but no, I, yeah, it was what I, I kind of went for. So I felt like I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good mixture of like the dialogue and the action. A lot of good character moments. I thought they also were quite adventurous, going down the route of like the the witches and the magic and different things like that. That was something quite new, and um, we hadn't seen before. Uh, and it didn't it didn't do the trope of ending it proper happily. Like Ezra got away, but they got stuck. So I think it I think it did take some risks, and I think it didn't kind of just go for the obvious route a lot of the time. Yeah, no, so I, like I said, it, it was it was a good series. It's just, uh, I'm surprised you gave it a six point five, Paul, because any time I've discussed it with you on Twitter or Messenger or whatever, you've always been glowing about it. So it was, I know, but just surprised. compared to other things, I don't think it's as good as other things. So 
Uh, Stop trying to change I, your opinion, Colin. I know. And I totally get where James is coming from because like so there's so many points in that that series where I was like, if I hadn't watched that cartoon series, I would have no idea what the hell's going on. I would need to be on the internet finding it absolutely everything and spend half my time on the internet mm. trying to figure out what these things were rather than enjoying the show. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of variables about it, I suppose. Um James, you had a few Twitter, Twitter comments to share. Yeah, okay. So on to the Twitter comments. We've got Cody Dubs. So we asked people what they thought of the the show as a whole. And Cody Dubs has said Thrawn, he was great, absolutely amazing. The eyes, skin, his cold, calculating nature. I'm very excited for what's next with him involved um, into the second bit there. Into a Thrawny movie with Thrawn as a big as the big bad. No, I think that's the end of the previous. Joe has split one of them into two. Oh, did you? So there's maybe one in the middle. That's it there. That's nothing, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, uh, yeah, involved with Ahsoka was solid, really great for the Star Wars diehards, but you guys, I suppose. I still like Andor more than Ashoka, but it's set up with some fun stuff for the future of Star Wars. Excited for season two and for what potentially would. I said Ashoka. I meant to say Ashoka, not Ashoka. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. so you can spell it unlike me <laughs> okay um, just keep it right here Colin just the, the second one I don't know that's wrong right enough that was um, a that was I thought I wrote it on it it was a Isaac Edwin. Isaac no, that one was James Matthews from uh, Moisture Farm Report. All right. He, he, sent a, he sent a picture of uh, Vader Anakin going towards the camera. Right, like, so this moment specifically, Vader Anakin walking towards the camera, that's what I said as well, it's decent. Um, but also the fights in episode four between Sabine and Shin, Ahsoka and the Inquisitor, and Ashoka and Valen. So that was your second favourite episode, wasn't it, Colin? Yeah, it was. Aye. Um... Yeah, I think that's so James likes a James likes a wee lightsaber fight. James Matthews likes a wee lightsaber fight. Is that what we're going for? Yep. And James, okay. if you're listening, Omega is still annoying. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think James is watched Bad Batch. Have you, James? No, just a, that's a, on the list as well. I feel like I feel like it's kind of like I've just watched them as they've came out. I've never had a backlog. I feel like if you're in a position, <laughs> it's a lot more difficult. You know what I mean, oh, just you see the sweat come off my my forehead now, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's back with the Star Wars, isn't it? No pressure, no pressure. And um, so, yes. Yeah, so, just to as a reminder that you can find us on Facebook, X, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok, Seismic Cinema, and you can also find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Pods, and all the other podcast stations. So, we would really appreciate with a Decent run recently, some increased views, uh, quite a few more subscribers. So if you've listened to this and you enjoyed the content, then give us a follow and a share and a, a like, etc. And if you feel you want to help fund James's new headphones, um, you can buy us a copy. And we've also got our subscription service on Spotify for podcasters. So, Paul, put you on the spot. What else have we got coming up the rest of this month? Uh, we've got Starship Troopers next week, which I'm probably going to host, and it's probably going to be absolutely honking. Uh, and then we've got Seismic Soccer number two, and I think we've got a lot to talk about there. I think someday might be talking about VAR, possibly, and we all know what a sack of shit that is. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Seismic <coughs> Soccer number two, and Starship Troopers for Out of This World, October. Yep. Well, guys, thank you very much for joining me on this Sunday morning to talk Ahsoka. And then um, see you next time. Yeah, cheers, Colin. Thank you. See you later, Paul. Out of a